Hey guys, Michael here from michaelsherlock.com and today I'm going to be giving you some information on USB 2.0 versus Firewire 400. Let's just zoom in and show you the cable differences. Uh, if you look, they're pretty much, they're very close uh, for the size of the actual plug if you look at it. If you look at the cable, however, white being USB, black being that Firewire 800, or 400 rather, the Firewire 400 cable is a little bit thicker, but it does allow a little bit more bandwidth to go through it. So that's always a plus. Now we'll just start off with some of the basics about this. Firewire 400 has 400 megabits per second, or around 50 megabytes per second, theoretical data flow. USB 2.0 has 480 megabits per second, or around 60 megabytes per second, theoretical data flow. So just looking at theoretical data transfer speeds, you're, you're probably going to think USB 2.0 is faster. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions. And I think once you're done with this video, you'll have a much better understanding of the comparison between USB and Firewire. So USB uses much more overhead in terms of host controller hubs, for instance, than Firewire 400. So using that, having that overhead, the computer then has to negotiate with the different hubs which then in turn negotiates USB traffic. So basically it's uh, the CPU has to work for USB transfer. So I guess you could call the CPU or the brain of your computer the middleman in this master-slave relationship. Now when we're looking at Firewire 400, uh, it's the same with 800 and I believe 3200 which will be coming out in the future, it is a peer-to-peer -peer relationship. So FireWire uses an intelligent uses intelligent controllers for point-to-point -point data transfer. Now this still uses some system resources, but barely any and significantly less than USB. So it definitely does not have as much overhead. Now with that, it also therefore, I guess you could say, has sustained throughput that's much faster. So even though theoretical throughput is a little bit less than USB, it's technically uh, or in real world, much more capable of getting up to that max transfer speed and then being able to sustain close to the max transfer speed. And again, that's called a peer-to-peer -peer relationship, and there is no CPU middleman. We went over with USB, it had that, the CPU, the brain of your computer, had to interact to get from the USB peripheral you had to negotiate USB traffic, but Fireware doesn't have that. It's pretty much independent. Uh, but don't, but don't be confused, it does still use a, a little bit of system resources, but again, nowhere near as much as USB. So basically, to break it down simply, if you don't know what host controller hubs are and it doesn't matter to you, USB is theoretically faster, but in real-world situations, Firewire 400 is going to be faster, and it's also going to be able to get higher throughput at constant speed. So even if in real-world testing, USB was able to spike above what Firewire could for a second, uh, Firewire is going to offer you more constant data flow and overall it's just going to be a faster experience, particularly when you're doing maybe high or large file size files, so probably HD video. If you're doing a lot of video editing, sort of just reiterated myself, but HD video, any things that are huge in file sizes, it's going to be much easier for Firewire 400 to handle that. Now one thing you need to consider is the device or peripheral either USB or Firewire when you're purchasing it because sometimes the bottleneck is going to be that peripheral and not the interface. So for instance I have a verbatim external hard drive here and if we uh, zoom in on the back uh, it's hard to see but it's USB and Firewire 400. Now when I ran some tests comparing I took basically I took some raw source uh, of one of my videos so raw source for, for 1080p AVCHD for that particular video was around 8 gigs so I did transfer tests I recorded the fastest transfer speed about the average throughput of it and I also recorded just the time on how quickly it went now USB 2.0 and Firewire 400 were pretty much about the same in terms of how quickly they went What's happening, Michael? Isn't that totally defeating what you just said? Well, the reason why that's happening is because this is only a 5400 RPM hard drive. The bottleneck is definitely the drive. So the drive is actually writing as fast as it could. So it didn't matter which interface we were using because it was well below the maximum and the average of both. 
Now, if you're using a hard drive, let's say you had an external enclosure with FireWire 400 and USB 2.0, and let's say you popped in, let's, let's go crazy and say you popped in a 10,000 RPM Raptor drive, there would be a significant difference, and you would definitely see a pretty big jump when you went from USB 2.0 to FireWire 400. So that's just something to keep in mind. Sometimes it'll be the same external drive and they'll charge you 30 or $40 more to get a FireWire 400 interface. Um, and they do that a lot. They have different models where it's essentially the same hardware but just you go up with USB, FireWire 400, triple interface, quad interface, whatever it may be. So you just need to do your research because you don't want to spend $400 on FireWire 400 which will offer faster throughput just theoretically with the interface, but if the bottleneck is the peripheral, then you don't need to spend that extra money because USB will do just the same job. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm sure you guys understand. So when you're searching for a drive, again, consider the peripheral, not just the interface. But when you're also looking at the interface, you may want to get a double, triple, or even quad interface. Double USB 2.0 FireWire 400. Triple could be those two plus eSATA or FireWire 800 and all of them together could be a quad interface and you see those on more expensive external drives. Now the reason I say go for a double uh, is because of this. If you're at your home workstation and you have FireWire then you can fly, you can download stuff to the drive or write, read stuff much quicker than USB and have fewer resources taken up on your system. However, FireWire ports are much more rare on computers than USB. Essentially all computers have USB 2.0 ports at this point and even if it's an older machine it's going to have USB 1 so you'll get those USB 1 speeds but you'll at least be able to connect your USB 2.0 drive. So if you let's say were going over to a friend's house or going over to a client's house if you had a let's say a double interface you can use that as faster speeds at your home or at your office when you're dealing with just stuff for you but then when you go over to a different environment, you have that USB, so if, if they don't have the more rare but quicker FireWire interface, just pop it in USB and you're good to go, because again, almost everything has USB 2.0. I'd just like to give a shout out to Mr. Bit on YouTube. He helped me out in this video. I pretty much knew the general stuff about it, but he helped me with some more of the specifics, so check him out. Uh, he's really smart and educated. Uh, with stuff like this on the more technical side. He is a programmer, so he does know a lot about this. And I'm personally subscribed to him because I enjoy that content, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you will too. So again, I'm Michael Sherlock from michaelsherlock.com. I hope this comparison of FireWire 400 and USB 2.0 has helped you in realizing that even though USB boasts faster theoretical speeds, in real-world situations, FireWire 400 is going to be just as fast, if not faster, and will even use fewer system resources. Uh, again, I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.